what I think Wikipedia really stands out to me is that as I went through school, it was always a place where I can look up things. So um, I have the benefit of being able to read English Wikipedia, Danish Wikipedia, Norwegian Wikipedia, and sometimes German Wikipedia too. And um, Wikipedia was always basically the savior when it was a word I didn't know, a term I needed to look up. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably it. So we all know that our students are using Wikipedia and we're all using it ourselves. Um, so I think that being familiar with it is really important and it's a really important part of information literacy and uh, digital skills and just uh, understanding of the um, resources that we and our students are using. Um, it's been really um, a really interesting and exciting experience for me because it's not something I've been involved with before but um, as a librarian I think it's it's something really important to get our students using Wikipedia and contributing to it, especially in medicine where it's often a first port of call for people for finding medical information. So contributing to that is really exciting because the students can actually, um, before they are doctors, they can actually contribute to the medical knowledge base. You've kind of contributed to public knowledge in some way, even if it's just repackaging knowledge that's already there, but you're making it accessible. and. It's a really good exercise in critical thinking, and that's something that um, you know, sort of the ultimate skill you learn in an undergrad degree. And and I suppose looking at it, yeah, learning to look at an article and think, how could this be improved? Um, and I think, and then finally, like as a student, it's a really good opportunity, and it's a really motivating thing to be able to do to relay the knowledge you've learnt from lectures and exams. It hasn't really been relevant outside of lectures and exams, but to see how it's relevant to the real world and to see how you can contribute and use your, use your knowledge to contribute. I think what I found surprising was how easy it was, like the visual editor was really good. I thought I'd have to do a lot of like HTML coding or something, um, but it was really easy uh, to just put it in and do the references and stuff. Um, yeah, and I suppose the other thing was how like satisfying it was when it was done. Like I thought, you know, comparing again to academic essays, like you send them off, you get the grade back, you look at the feedback, and you really never really read them again. Whereas um, I suppose knowing that people are coming back to this article and finding it useful uh, is really like gratifying, and you're just yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was it was fun. It remains a massive resource for people to access and understand history. Um, and yet the history that people access on Wikipedia is often very different from the history that you would access in a university department. There's very little social history, there's very little women's history and gender history, uh, history of women of people of colour or queer history. Um, and the only way that's going to be overcome is if people from those disciplines start actively engaging in Wikipedia and trying to correct those imbalances because, you know, this I'm sure people are fascinated by what sort of bullet was used in X sort of gun. Um, but I feel the social potential of Wikipedia to change people's perspectives on the world uh, really lies in correcting imbalances in their representation of the world. And that's a very long sentence with far too many long words. But basically what I'm trying to say is that people should try and make Wikipedia accurately represent the diversity of the world around us and the diversity of history and the diversity of uh, historical scholarship. Yeah, so I think there's definitely been a shift in terms of how people have viewed Wikipedia. So I think while it's still not widely cited as um, its own source for information, then I think it's really been gaining a huge amount of credibility in terms of a, a starting point and a lot of the references that are contained within these articles are really reputable science publications and journals but I think one of the strengths of Wikipedia is that it's making this accessible to a much broader and a much wider audience so in terms of having that really good starting point then it is a lot of people's first call now when it comes to learning about a new topic and sort of highlights or pinpoints some of the relevant literature. Yeah, I suppose on another another dimension of that, I suppose is, um, you know, what do we want a modern graduate to be? Um, um, we're moving from um, a modern graduate thinking about um, sourcing information to, as Jenny mentioned earlier, this idea of critical analysis and critical thinking. So Wikipedia has sort of, I think, um, moved into this area of being a useful information source in its own right um, 
there, there's a sense of increase in trustworthiness in that source. I think mm-hmm. perhaps a lot of the lack of trust in the past was that oh, anybody could go in and change it and then it wouldn't be true anymore. But I think um, it's it's kind of clear that there are such strong gatekeepers on, on articles that, that ten, it tends to be a reliable source. So we're moving into a, a, a sphere now where Wikipedia as a, as a useful source and a reliable source uh, is more and more emerging to be the first step students go to before they go on to perhaps integrating that information with other information, using that as a lead frog and so on. So I, I just think it's becoming more established as a aspect, an aspect of resource that students use in their in their education. I also do think that where then Wikipedia has a really good space is that academia focuses way too little on how to communi- communicate you know world leading research to the layman people I love the rap that is why everyone I that's why I love Wikipedia I've always loved it like you know you click on one page and then five hours later you're still in like you know you start out it's like I don't know, World War Two history and you end up in like I don't know how proteins are broken down in your body and you're like, I don't know how I got there.